Year after year, Fairphone keeps going its own sweet way in the smartphone world. Um, in a tech world, it's becoming more and more homogenized with everything only repairable at great cost by manufacturers, everything so fragile that it has to be cased and cosseted. Fairphone proposes, well, again, a different approach. Now you've heard of right to repair in the context of Apple, Google, Samsung and the like. Well, you buy a Fairphone, you not only have the right to repair it, you can do so at the drop of a hat with zero technical knowledge. Broken the screen, broken the camera, feel like a new battery, all available online at reasonable cost and you can fit them yourself, literally in minutes. Partly because of this and also partly because the Fairphone 4 is built like a tank with metal frame and grippy rubberized back, you can absolutely do without a case on the phone. No cosseting, you just bung it in your pocket and use it as is, as I've been doing for the last week and a half. Surely you say there must be a catch. Well, not quite a catch, but it's worth looking at the Fairphone 4 specs and value proposition. You see, designing around a fully user repairable ideal does involve a few compromises, of which the biggest is that by doing its own thing and being a very small company, Fairphone can't get top spec core components and the ones it can purchase for its phones, it can't get at the prices that the big companies can demand from suppliers. So you end up paying a lot more for a given spec level, plus the components have to be, to an extent, packed slightly less optimally to allow for easy removal and replacement. And all the extra plastic to facilitate this adds weight. The Fairphone 4 isn't light at 225 grams. But enough intro here. We're talking about a fairly standard Android 11 5G smartphone with Snapdragon 750G 5G chipset and 6 gig 128 gigabyte and 8 256 gigabyte variants at a price of £500 or £570 respectively, which is a lot given the likes of Xiaomi's pricing. But I have to emphasise this is a very different beast, hardware and software. In trying to save the planet, Fairphone not only makes sure that its supply chain and manufacturing process is electronic waste neutral, it not only arranges that the shipping to you is carbon neutral or offset, it encourages you to keep the Fairphone 4 for at least five years with full warranty for that long. Yes, you heard that right. A five year hardware warranty and five years of genuine OS updates are planned, i.e. up to Android 16, though the last two will require Fairphone itself to write the drivers since Qualcomm will have given up on the 750G line by then with, if I read things right, a guaranteed six years of security updates as well. The Fairphones are the longest supported smartphones in the Android world, bar none. Like I say, it's a very different animal to a budget Xiaomi. Super though, these may be. Fairphones designed for the 4 is on the whole a big step up from last year's 3 Plus with a larger 6.3 inch diagonal screen. They're still 1080 and still IPS LCD. A little disappointing given the price, but then OLED screens do dim and burn in over time. So maybe LCD is the smart eco choice covered in Gorilla Glass 5. You also get stereo speakers for the first time on a Fairphone. Here's a demo. This is a bit of classical for a change, full volume. <laughs> They're very middly. Clarity, bass and ultimately volume are way behind other phones nowadays, which is a shame, even phones which are half the price. The 48 megapixel quad bear camera is faster too than the 3 Plus at f over 1.6 aperture and there's now a 48 megapixel ultra wide too, plus a time of flight sensor handily disguised as a main camera to kind of look cool for portrait shots. Here are some example photos, which are decent enough in all light levels without expecting iPhone or pixel levels of imaging intelligence. It's worth noting, by the way, that the Google camera ports do work fine here thanks to the standard Snapdragon chip. So that's another good imaging option. Do watch out for shooting modes, by the way, since they get remembered from session to session, which would seem like a good thing, but you use something niche like fireworks mode and then forget about it until the next week when you've just shot a dozen snaps of your baby nephew and you only notice later, 
And now all of these were shot in fireworks mode. <laughs> it's remembered from a week ago. And there are lots of noise and artefacts. Fairphone could do with making settings memory a little optional feature, I think. There's currently a little shutter lag too, plus occasional autofocus issues. But Fairphone was at pains in, to point out to me directly that the camera software is still being actively developed and that big updates are imminent. So we'll see. The capacitive fingerprint sensor is much faster than last year's and is now in the side mounted power button, which I like. Way faster than under screen sensors, as I've mentioned many times. Though the effect is slightly spoiled here by the sensor not actually waking the phone in the first place. On the Fairphone 4, with current software at least, you have to press in the power button first to wake the screen, then you touch it again to activate the sensor and authenticate. It's a tiny bit of a pain. I can think this will be fixed in software. The battery is 25% larger at almost 4,000 milliamp hours, and I had no issues in the testing period. Helped by there being no always on display and by the so-so speakers, meaning I didn't actually want to waste much battery binging YouTube or Netflix. Fast charging in the eco-conscious Fairphone world is 20 watts. Quick charge for and power delivery compatible, and this is absolutely the sweet spot. Charge any faster and you're generating heat, wasting energy and reducing the longevity of the battery. But again, I have to emphasise this, the battery can be swapped out in about 15 seconds. Still a lovely concept in 2021. New batteries are £26 on the Fairphone website, which sounds about right. And if I was using this as my main smartphone, and that's a big if, then I'd go old school and have a fully charged spare sitting in my pocket, ready to slam in when on a trip. Ah oh yes, trips. Remember those? pre-COVID-19. Aside from the highish price, there's one little gotcha and it's a bit unfortunate. Fairphone has ditched the 3.5mm audio jack, claiming that doing so made it possible to make the phone IP54 dust and water resistant. Itself an achievement for something with a peel-off plastic back. I don't really buy into Fairphone's argument here though. Samsung had audio jacks in fully waterproof phones for years. And so does Sony these days. Xperia's. In fairness, most of us are learning to live with Bluetooth 5.1 now, which is now terrific in my experience. And when you want to go wired, Fairphone's own Type-C to 3.5mm dongle is only £9 on their website, though I'll bet you already have one or two lying around, which will also work just fine. The software, as with previous Fairphones, is stock Android 11 with all the Google apps and services you need and without any bloatware at all. Hurrah! You take it, you add your own favourites, then you have your usual gesture-based Android environment, including Google Assistant, the Google News Feed off to the left of the main home screen, the works. No complaints here whatsoever. Think of this as a pixel that you can take apart. With an LCD screen, you'll be expecting not to have an always-on display, but there's also no lift to wake, or even double tap to wake, which seems a bit of an omission. Two features for Fairphone to add in with updates, I think. In summary, my heart is absolutely with Fairphone. I wish it all the success in the world. It's the little company that's trying to change the industry and who knows how much of an impact it can make. My cold light of day mind, on the other hand, points out to my heart that I can get far better display speakers, camera, battery life for the same money elsewhere or similar components in a Motorola or Xiaomi phone at half the price. But that's not the point. Anyone buying the Fairphone 4 is standing up to be counted in a tech world that's fast becoming rather commoditized and heartless. And that's worth applauding.